again, most scums just so Pete and I want to look at learning for sustainability as an approach and start to put it into practice. And we're going to do this over a cup of tea. So Pete, I know you like a good cup of tea, as do I. But if we're going to start to think critically about this, where would we begin? Well, what we drink and what we eat is fundamental to our health and welfare. And there are many issues embedded in a cup of tea. And they really help us to think about complexity as an issue and sustainability as a concept. So if we started with water then, what questions could we ask around that? Well, water. Look, here we've got some boiling water. Now, water to me is amazing stuff. Uh, we turn on the tap and it just comes out. And yet, in many parts of the world, that isn't the case. And millions are without water. So, from an environmental point of view, water drives our weather and climate. The water cycle is fundamental to life on Earth and the way in which we settle in various parts of the world. From a social perspective, we recreate close to it, on it and in it. From an economic perspective, Many people make their livings out of the delivery of water to us, uh, the production of crops, and indeed dealing with the waste products that result from our use of water. It really is wonder stuff. So there are lots of big issues there. So coming back to our cup of tea, we've got the water, but it doesn't always arrive boiled in every case. So this introduces an issue of energy. So what kind of critical questions could we ask there? Well, in a way, that's obvious, really, because, as you say, this water is boiled. Where did the energy come from? Well, the first question is, what sources are there which provide us with the energy to boil water? Are those sources sustainable? And indeed, how efficiently do we use that energy so we don't waste it? So, what about the actual tea leaves that are in here? I imagine there's a lot of rich history and social issues that are bound up in this. Well, this is fascinating because, to me, tea has many cultural traditions and rituals around the world, and they're all different. And, indeed, the process of drinking tea has a long history. It started out as an infusion uh, from a native plant grown in China. Subsequently, the British, amongst others, found out about tea, and eventually it became so valuable that wars were fought over it. It became a key feature in British and European expansion and colonialism around the world. It was introduced into India, primarily to break the Chinese monopoly on tea. Um, and in more contemporary times, the Boston Tea Party, which was essentially a protest against the tax that was levied on tea by the British led to the American Revolution. It would certainly be appropriate to say that there's a whole history within a tea bag. So what about the milk and the sugar that we might add to our tea? Surely that introduces a whole set of other questions as well. Yes, of course it does. And I guess we should start with sugar. Now, not everybody likes sugar in their tea, but there are many people who do. And it's quite a cultural tradition. Certainly here in the UK, many people will put sugar in their tea, but in other countries, people would think of it as a very strange thing indeed to do so. And I find it interesting to think where our sweet tooth comes from. Why do we like to have sugar in tea and indeed in other things that we eat? What are the health-related issues of the sugar that we use? Why do we use white refined sugar instead of whole sugar? There, there are, of course, social issues. Where is the sugar produced? How is it produced? Are there fair trade issues around the sugar production? Indeed, the plant that's used to produce the sugar is almost certainly sugar cane. There are other ways we can produce sugar through sugar beet, and yet the production and export of sugar cane products is a worldwide industry and there are many features that we can examine there that relate to complexity too. So what about milk? What kind of questions would we ask there? Well milk is of course fascinating. There are some nations on earth where 
drinking milk and eating dairy products would be thought of as a very strange thing. And of course, here in the UK, everybody drinks milk and everybody eats dairy products, at least those who are tolerant of milk and milk-based products, and yet not everyone is. So there are allergies, there are tolerances and intolerances, and there's a whole range of health issues associated with that, as well as, of course, the problems with eating too much dairy and drinking too much milk. I think one of the things that fascinates me most is that, as a species, we're the only one that drinks milk after we've been weaned. Now, that's odd in its own right, but the fact that we actually drink milk from a species which isn't human is very weird indeed, and yet we don't question it. Now, to me, this raises all sorts of interesting issues about what we see and what we don't see, what we think of as normal and what we don't think of as normal. So, for example, if this were human breast milk in this jug, no one would want to drink it. Why is that? And why is it we find it perfectly acceptable to drink milk from cows? A whole world of complexity there, and some of it quite controversial. So, bringing this all back together then, and coming back to our cup of tea, how would we start to sum this up? Well, you're right. We've talked about all the bits, but we haven't talked about the whole, the whole cup of tea. And to me, as I said at the start, embodied in that cup of tea are a whole range of environmental, social and economic issues. As consumers, we're probably more interested in what the tea tastes like and we'll make our decisions according to the pressures of marketing and the media, as well as what our friends tell us is a good cup of tea. But to me, the fascinating issue here is that we can see the world through this cup of tea and we can address many complex and sustainability issues through thinking about the component parts and the tea as a whole and to me that's fascinating. So our purpose in providing this cup of tea example is to illustrate two things. The first is the high degree of complexity that's involved in a simple everyday action. And the second is that we often don't give ourselves time and space to think about the range of issues and factors that are involved in an activity such as making a cup of tea, but also to think about the interconnectedness of those factors as well. Now I'm sure you could do something similar with your own group of learners. You could use an item of food or drink or an issue that's local to you in your context, wherever that might be.